superiors by saying my friend was picking flowers far away from here and on the way her breasts were bruised by thorns her tilak was washed away from her forehead by perspiration and her lips were bruised by the cold wind. O oh, Radhiki, when will I hide the signs of your amorous union with your beloved? from your cruel superiors by saying, my friend was picking flowers far away from here and on the way her breasts were bruised by thorns. Her tilak was washed from her forehead by perspiration and her lips were bruised by the cold wind. In the afternoon, Shemati sits at home in Yavad, suffering separation from her beloved Mohana. Radha. The pain of separation increases to such an extent that Shemati cannot tolerate it anymore and she goes out alone on the pretext of picking flowers and fetching water for her puja, hoping to meet Mohana on the way. Shripada, in his kinkari form, follows her like her shadow. Through the great power of Leela Shakti, the mystical pastime potency, anxious Srimati automatically comes to the forest where Krishna dwells. What a wonderful service Vrindavana's wind is then rendering to Swamini by carrying Mohana's bodily fragrance into her nostrils from afar. Like a thirsty bumblebee girl, Shimati quickly follows this aroma. And when she sees Mohana from a distance, she pretends to pick flowers, decorating herself with Bhava Bhushana, 
ecstatic ornaments like Lalita and Vilas. She pretends to be shy and afraid when she sees Mohan and she acts as if that she has just come there to pick flowers for her puja. Mohana and the maid servant drown in the rasa of topmost bliss when they see Shimati's sweet mood at that time. The jewel of lovers, Mohan, becomes so attracted to this sweet mood that he comes up to Shemati and says, Who are you? Why are you ruining the beauty of my garden? by picking flowers here, breaking all the tender sprouts. Hearing these joking words of restless-eyed Mohan, Shimati softly says, I am picking flowers for my puja. Why are you stopping me? and she hides among the blooming Mali vines at some distance. Krishna comes up to her again and says, I am engaged as a gardener here by King Cupid. Every day flowers are stolen from this garden and now I understand that you are that thief. Today I caught you and I won't let you go. Srimati says, O oh, lotus eyed one, I am a housewife. Do not touch me. Look, the sun is slowly going down. I have a lot of work to do at home. So let me go, Krishna says, O oh golden beauty, show me all the wealth that you have stolen from King Cupid. How many flowers have you hidden in your braid and in your bodies? Come here and I will personally investigate. After that, you can go home. Shimati then says with false anger, O oh, shameless guy, what Cupid are you speaking about? You are the Cupid of Vrindavan. I have a friend named Brinda, and this garden belongs to her. Therefore, it is named Vrindavana. Everybody knows this. What right do you have? to stop us from picking flowers in our own Vrindavana. Quickly get out of the way. I'm going home. Mohana says, O oh, slender beauty, do not speak like that. King Cupid has a very angry nature and he can cast the young girls in great waves of terror. If you want to save yourself from his grip, then quickly enter into my bower house, which is protected by intoxicated, heroic bumblebees. When Srimati hears these joking words of her beloved, she becomes filled 
with delightful, amorous desires that cause her veil to fall off and her braid to loosen slightly. She gives Mohana the greatest pleasure with her stammering emotional words. The maidservant then arranges for Radha and Mohana's amorous meeting in a nearby kunja, after which Shimati quickly returns home, terrified of a possible punishment meted out by her cruel superiors. When Srimati returns to her husband's home, her suspicious sister-in-law, Kutila, sees the signs of Krishna's lovemaking on her body and starts to chastise her. How can the maidservant, to whom Swamini is dearer than millions of lives, tolerate this? She cleverly conceals these amorous signs on Srimati's body by saying, O oh, Kutile, why are you uselessly chastising this innocent, chaste, and tender-natured girl? She went to pick flowers and fetch water for her puja, but on the way her breasts were bruised by thorns. Her sweat drops caused her tilak to be washed from her forehead, and the chilly wind on the bank of the Yamuna dried and bruised her sprout-like lips. These are not signs of an amorous meeting with some paramour. What a wonderful service the maid servant renders to her Swamini by using such clever words. Sometimes Shimati also personally conceals these amorous signs from her enemies. Oh, sister-in-law, I cannot tolerate your slanderous insults anymore. Jatila questions, why does a world enchanting housewife like you go every morning to the Yamuna. And why do you return home so late, only at nightfall? Radhika replies, In the morning, I saw a lotus flower, which was nice to give to my mother-in-law, so I went out to pick it. In the daytime, the lotus flowers are swarming with bumblebees and they have bitten me. The thorns around the lotus flowers scratched me and thus I lost my bangles. I went into the water to look for them. And in this way, the whole day was lost. Just see, my whole body is bruised because of this one lotus flower. This is the end of verse.
Two hands with him. Yeah. Yeah. Reading verse two hundred and nine. When will I be so fortunate? To see how the Krishna bee is intoxicated by drinking the honey from Shiradika's lotus like mouth with great relish, piercing her golden lotus bud like breast. that are sprouting in the rays of her smiling, moon-like face, as if he wants to enter into them and landing on her lotus feet again and again. When will I be so fortunate? to see how the Krishna bee is intoxicated by drinking the honey from Shiradika's lotus-like mouth with great relish, piercing her golden lotus bud like breasts that are sprouting in the rays of her smiling moon like face as if he wants to enter into them and this krishna bee is landing on her lotus feet again and again. With beautifully rhyming words and meters, sweet metaphors, and in a very sweet, spontaneous mood, Sri Pada expresses his transcendental experiences in the verses of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. Just as a really beautiful woman does not require any jewelry or makeup to be beautiful and looks attractive even when she wears tree bark in the same way the transcendental beauty of Shiradika becomes spontaneously manifest in devotional verses of praise and it is able to attract the reader even if the meters, the grammar and the metaphors are not used quite properly. This book, Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, shines 
with an abundance of ecstatic love and is also written with incomparably beautiful meters and metaphors. In this verse, Shripada sees himself as a maid servant. Taking Swamini on Abhisa, love journey. Mohana is anxiously waiting for her to come to the Tristing Kunja when he suddenly sees a golden light illuminating all the directions. Mohana, who is ecstasy himself, becomes ecstatic when he sees Swamini and he takes her into the Tristing Kunja. Today, the natural Bhamyavati, girl in opposition, is most generous. The sweet and chanting meeting of the divine couple cannot be properly described with words. But still, the great saints like Sri Chandilasa tried. Radhika's heart is filled with delight. She feels as if she has found a lost jewel which she takes to her heart and keeps there without interval. How wonderful is their meeting Krishna is like a Chakora bird who attains the moon and he falls into the trap of love like a bumblebee coming to a female lotus flower. Their bodies are filled with rasa. And they shiver of ecstasy when they meet each other. Today, the fire of their separation is extinguished. They sit on a jeweled throne, blissfully looking at each other's faces. But they cannot see each other anymore through the tears in their eyes. So they constantly remain bewildered. Today, the southern breeze is softly blowing and the full moon shines clearly. Chandidasa stays by the side of the divine couple, fanning them with a yakte fan and sings 
with a voice faltering out of ecstasy. How sweet is their meeting. Understanding that a young couple wants to make love. The maid servant goes out of the kunja. When she looks inside through the holes of the vines, she sees that Nagara is thirstily drinking the nectar from Priyaji's lips. The more he relishes, the more thirsty he becomes. And the more thirsty he is, the more he relishes. Mohana gradually gets drunk from drinking all this nectar. This nectar cannot be compared to the taste of an ordinary girl's lips. The lips of Shimati Radhika are full of Madhana Rasa, the highest nectar of transcendental love. Just as a drunkard constantly falls down and gets up again, so the drunken Krishna bee constantly lands on the lotus feet of Srimati and gets up from them again after drinking their love leaden honey. Just as a bee scratches at the petals of a closed lotus flower, thinking, surely there must be more inside there for me. Mohana also scratches at the golden lotus bud-like breasts of Swamini. that are sprouting in the beams of her moonlight face, as if trying to pierce them with his nails. How cleverly Sripada describes these sweet pastimes. This is the end of this, 209. Rati, Rati, go.